Hi, thanks for attending. My name is Hugo Fillion. I'm co-founder of Flare. I'd like to introduce you to the Flare network. Our thesis is that product innovation in blockchain has been held back by outmoded and expensive Oracle systems that limit what data can be bought on chain. I'm going to pre present our solution to that at Flare. Blockchains are self-contained systems. They've not traditionally been designed to interact with external systems. Bitcoin is a good example of that. Beyond its usage as a store of value, there isn't much by design that developers can engage with. However, much of the utility in the space comes from the nexus of decentralized computation with external data. This is unlikely to change. Today's Oracle systems suffer from meaningful drawbacks. They're hard to decentralize, expensive to use, and difficult to scale. In the last couple of years, there's been limited new development around decentralized data acquisition methods. At Flare, we're focusing on building a smart contract platform optimized for data acquisition, where the data infrastructure of the network is engaged in data provision. Our mission is to enable applications to utilize the broadest range of data provided in a decentralized manner at scale, but most importantly, at minimal cost. We term this data provision as a public good. Flare's aim is to give developers a platform on which to build with the broadest amount of data possible, delivered cheaply and securely, and with trustless access to deep sources of liquidity and users from across the largest blockchains. So to summarize what Flare is, it's an L1 EVM based chain. Flare's validators are the principal data providers. There are three data provision categories time series data, prices and indices, blockchain state data, and data from Web2. Flare Labs are then building two types of trustless bridge, one for non-smart contract tokens like Bitcoin, Doge, Litecoin, XRP, and one for tokens from smart contract networks. And you may think, why is this interesting to the Ethereum community? Well, Flare is designed as an L1, Specifically, it has to be an L1 because of the way the data acquisition protocols work. But with our trustless bridges, it's essentially a sort of middleware or a utility layer for all blockchains. So onto our native acquisition, data acquisition protocols, we ask ourselves two questions. If a system is, is a system decentralized if it relies heavily on, on a centralized component. This is really where we find DeFi today with its reliance on centralized oracles. And then secondly, what can be built if the cost of acquiring data on chain is dramatically reduced? Flare has two native decentralized data acquisition protocols that provide data from three sources. So the Flare time series oracle for time series data, prices and indices, the FTSO uses batch updates instead of individual price feeds. This reduces gas utilization of the system relative to an oracle with the same number of individual feeds. And the FTSO has a scaling plan to achieve a thousand series with one to two block update times. The state connector for blockchain data and a separate setting of the state connector for Web2 data called Web Connector. A state connector rolls up off-chain proofs for Web2 API and blockchain state data, allowing a massive amount of data to be proven on chain in a single update. Collectively, the aim of these protocols is to be able to provide in a secure and decentralized manner at minimal cost to the user as much open source data as can be as is required. These protocols can then have payment modules on top for when data needs to be acquired from a paywalled source. The protocols are built into the infrastructure provision role i.e. the network's validators are the data providers for the protocol. On to our sort of bridges from Flare Labs. So trusted bridges, you know, multi-sig, MPC, and to some extent layer zero, are clearly risky for the user. And we think very clearly operating outside of most applicable regulations. We're building two trustless bridge protocols to allow developers both on Flare and elsewhere to access value and users across the whole space. 
Layer Cake is a trustless, low latency bridge solution that allows users to bridge value with attached cool data. This means that users can execute a transaction directly on a destination chain from their source chain. Layer Cake has no multi-sig, no valid data set, no governance. Bridging with Layer Cake has insurance whilst the funds are moved across chain and against chain rollback over at least six hours. Whilst plausibly falling into the optimistic class of bridges, we think it's sufficiently different from what has gone before that we're actually calling it the first pessimistic bridge. Our plans are to roll Layer Cake out across many chains, not just Flare. The F assets are our solution as to how to get non-smart contract tokens such as Bitcoin, Litecoin, Doge, and XRP to be represented on a smart contract chain without a centralized third party. F assets are formerly a delta neutral synthetic with multi-collateral backing. The F assets can be generated on Flare, but can be bridged out through to any other ecosystem through Layer Cake. So let's look at some of the use cases that we think Flare improves by providing data at scale and at lower cost. So obviously bridging, the F asset protocol relies on our data protocols. It opens up the use of non-smart contract tokens on Flare through decentralized bridging based on Flare's data protocols. A relay system where the relay nodes can be staked on Flare and slashed via the state connector proofs, which would enable safer communications between an arbitrary set of chains. New and useful DeFi products can be built leveraging new data and or data that is currently too expensive to access via traditional oracles. The gaming economy and reward system can be expanded and innovated upon by harnessing Flare's ability to cheaply prove large amounts of Web2 API data. Smart contracts on Flare can be triggered by events external to the chain and this creates new forms of cross-chain or cross-domain, so between Web2 and Web3, economic models that can be developed. DAOs can be built that react to events automatically, reduce the res reducing the response time to, to organizing a vote. And you know, as identity, as the industry becomes more compliant, a wide array of data points can be attested onto Flare to generate a comprehensive profile of an individual's or an entity. So those are use cases that uh, Flare, we think, can improve. What's a kind of new use case that we think Flare kind of gives, uh, opens the door to? So the data protocols on Flare enable, we think, new forms of utility. The one example is ML. The ML crypto pivot meme doesn't need to exist. Blockchains can serve utility to the machine learning industry. The blockchain can address three fundamental issues facing the ML industry. That is acquiring good verifiable data, which is ex currently expensive and difficult to do. Training a model is highly resource intensive, and it's difficult to demonstrate the parameters and the error rates. Lastly, there's no straightforward way to access and pay for the use of pre-trained models. Flare can enable a data marketplace where anyone can sell data that are verified through the web connector a model training marketplace where someone with data can pay for the training of that data and the outcome of training can be verified on chain. And then lastly, a marketplace for pre-trained models where users that want to query a model, i.e. get an output for a given input, can access the model and pay for it via Flare. Flare's competitive advantages in this area are that it already has a network of data providers that have a skill in applying complex data processing techniques to create data feeds. This is what Flare's time series Oracle is doing. The network of data providers have access to compute capacity and a track record of harnessing game theoretic incentives around data provision. The network itself has low cost decentralized solutions to bringing the necessary verification proofs on chain. So in summary, we believe developers need access to data on-chain to build many of the products that will bring further utility to our space. That data needs to be delivered in a decentralized manner, inexpensively, and at scale. Flare, we believe, is the only smart contract platform specifically focused on doing this. We believe that as much data as possible should be acquirable on-chain as a public good. If you're interested in Flare, you can go to one of our two websites, flare.network or flarelabs.org. Thank you. Any questions? Take that as red then.